Hello everybody, DK Gillespie here, and welcome to my review of the Transformers Studio Series Deluxe Class Barricade. Yes, he finally came, and was he worth it? Oh yes, he was so worth it. I'll tell you right now, I freaking love this figure. Alright, let's get in on the packaging, and then we'll get in on the figure. So here is Barricade's packaging. We have a nice picture of Barricade right there, all like, Oh, you use your name, ladies, Barricade 1728 Barricade Studio Series Transformers Hasbro. Transformers Generations on the side. We have an awesome picture of Barricade. I always really liked that picture of Barricade. Uh, Autobot logo up there for some reason. They can't put the Decepticon logo anyway. Oh, you use your name, ladies, Barricade 217. On the back, we have a nice picture of Barricade right there. That actually is quite a bit better painted than the actual figure itself. Uh, just saying. Uh, Ugly Hard product shots, vehicle mode, robot mode, the display base right there. 20 steps right Right there on this side. Wow, only 20 steps, really? I didn't even notice that. This guy's kind of complex. I kind of confuse. That kind of surprises me because Bumblebee was 39 steps. So, <laughs> uh, once again, also picture barricade right there. I like, oh, usually much. I told you, 28 on the top. Nothing. <laughs> I just now realized this little tag on the top of my thing right there says crate case. Man. <laughs> Thank God they didn't send me crate case on accident because I would not have been happy. Um, not that I don't want crane case, but I wanted my barricade. I wanted Uncle Barry, man. I wanted him. And here is a Barricade, and I freaking adore this figure. This might, I, this is definitely my favorite Deluxe Class Studio Series figure so far, and it might just be because I absolutely freaking love Barricade. Barricade is easily one of my favorite Decepticons from the first movie, um, if not my absolute favorite, honestly. And... Honestly, he might be my favorite Studio Series figure so far, just period. I freaking love this guy. He's just, he's so fun, he's so, he's just, he looks so great, and... Oh, I love this guy. So here he is in his cop car mode. He is a saline Mustang, and I absolutely love this car. I love Mustangs. Nice car. Very difficult to film this guy because he's just all black plastic, but overall, as you can see, all the details that you'd really care about are there. The, the signature Mustang type uh, grill thing right there. Right there. Very, very nice. He does have the little Decepticon logo on the side here. Man, he's tiny. There you go, a little Decepticon logo right there. Police to punish and enslave, of course, you can't miss that. Police 643, the little uh, siren right there, super cool. On the back, he does have the saline logo, as you can see right there. The headlights are picked out in red paint. Overall, I freaking love the way the car mode looks. He rolls so well, so much better than my Bumblebee. Oh my goodness gracious, this guy is just, he's nearly perfect. I do have some complaints with this guy, but he's nearly perfect. Uh, but yeah, just overall, the car, the cop car mode looks really great. Here's the the bottom and uh yeah just overall i just think he looks really really good now one thing i will say i did say this in the bumblebee review but i thought but he is a small figure and for when you and when you pay twenty dollars for this guy you're gonna think he's a little bit too smaller than what you would expect to get for twenty dollars but here he is with bumblebee and as you can see here he is perfectly in scale with bumblebee which i think is what they were probably going for because if i bring in Soundwave here Soundwave is quite substantially bigger than both of them because so either a studio series wanted to put them in scale so they made them smaller than everybody else or they made Soundwave bigger i guess for him to be in scale with everybody else, I don't know. They all they're they're kind of the same height in robot mode, so I don't really know. I'm not on the Hasbro team, obviously. I didn't design these figures, so they probably know. I don't. I'm sure there's a good reason for it, but I mean, when you put Barricade next to Soundwave here, they don't really work that well because Soundwave is so much bigger than uh than the Barricade figure right there. But I mean, overall, they they don't look bad or anything, but. And you know, it's just, it's just worth noting. And, uh, and with Bumblebee, he looks absolutely perfect. I love the way they look together. You can get some really sweet, uh, poses, uh, with them two together right there. But that's not the comparison we care about, of course! Here we have the full team except Blackout, which is freaking, it's killing me! Amazon delivered my Blackout already. This is driving me insane. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Blackout's the only one I don't have. Blackout is one of my favorites. Oh, uh, but here they are. They look absolutely terrific together. Oh my god, I cannot. I I literally, I don't think I can wait much longer for my Blackout. I'm gonna freaking die, man. <laughs> But they look so freaking good together. Uh, obviously, the the Studio Series Barricade looks so much better with these guys next to the movie, ma um, the other than the movie Masterpiece Barricade, which I will compare him to in just a second here. But overall, oh my god, they look incredible together. I love it so much.
But I also want to show him just exclusively with the land vehicles here, just so you can get a sense of how he scales with them. And I think the scale is pretty much perfect here, because I know that these vehicles would be pretty huge in real life. So Bone Crusher and Brawl, I think they're really, really, they scale really, really well with Barricade here. Oh my god, I love them, I love them, I need my blackout so bad, I need, I need my blackout so bad. Because honestly, I genuinely think, I don't want to say too much without, without not having a blackout yet, but... Honestly, this set right here looks, Im just looks absolutely to die for, man. They look incredible together. And when I add Blackout into this, oh my god, it's gonna be like the be-all, end-all set. I can't, I cannot freaking wait. Oh my god, I need my Blackout. I need him so bad. Please, Amazon, please. And here he is with the movie Masterpiece Barricade. And I don't want to take anything away from the movie Masterpiece Barricade here. I do really like the movie Masterpiece Barricade. I'm very happy to have it. I certainly won't be getting rid of it because I have the Studio Series 1 now, but... I will tell you straight up, I like the Studio Series one more. It just fits my collecting thing as a as a as a whole so much better. I prefer the scale. He looks so much better next to the other ones. Um, the Movie Masterpiece Barricade is a fantastic figure. If you'd like to watch a review of the Movie Masterpiece Barricade, I will leave a link to it in the description down below. But yeah, um, it's it's. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a brother with his papa. It's just adorable, isn't it? Isn't it? It's just so cute. But yeah, I I'll talk more about these two as a whole, like which one to get, like which barricade to go for when I uh, show them when I compare them in robot mode. But there you have the car mode comparison. Now, you do get one accessory barricade, and it's not Frenzy, but it is still pretty cool. You do get his murder wheel right here, and it's not nearly as well done as it is on the movie Masterpiece. Right here, here's the movie Masterpiece murder wheel. And yeah, it's not nearly as good, because you can see, you know, with the, with the movie Masterpiece, it had the silver, and this one spun a whole lot better. This one just loves to spin and murder, murder wheel. There we go. But this one does spin as well. They did, uh, they did engineer it, so you can spin it as well, which is pretty cool. Um... I won't lie to you, I would have preferred Frenzy over this, I definitely would have preferred Frenzy over the murder wheel, but hey, I like that they gave him an accessory, and if it, was, and if it, and if it wasn't going to be Frenzy, I think they executed this pretty well. And you can actually incorporate it into the vehicle mode, unlike the, uh, unlike the movie Masterpiece Barricade. It looks ridiculous, but honestly, I kind of like it in a really weird way, I kind of like it, but you can take this little section right here that, it, that will peg into his hand in robot mode, and you can plug it into that little port right there underneath him, and it can be a little lawnmower. <laughs> so yeah, now he can go around and mow people's lawns. So yeah, Barricade is, uh, he's such a helpful guy, ain't he? But uh, yeah, I love the, but honestly, I, I kind of like the way this looks, honestly, and you can kind of get some cool poses with him kind of chasing Bumblebee. I don't remember him doing this in the movie. In fact, I would bet he anything that he doesn't do this in the movie, not once, but um, still, I mean, I, I kind of like it, honestly. I mean, it doesn't hurt, like, this, this storage doesn't hurt the, the vehicle mode or the robot mode in any way, so, I mean, it doesn't hurt it at all to have this here. It is kind of difficult to get it out. Once you get it in there, though, it is kind of, it is a bit difficult to get it out, but you just kind of have to wiggle it out, and it will come out eventually. It's, 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 it's there we go. Uh, but yeah, overall, I, I, I can dig it, I can dig it. I do like this accessory overall, but there you have that. All right, now for transformation, and this, okay. Going from car mode to robot mode is so much fun. I love going from car mode to robot mode. Going from robot mode to car mode, it's a different story. It's a different story, but we will cross that bridge when we come to it. But transformation from car mode to robot mode is super fun. So come to the back here, take this piece, and you want to flip this piece out, and then this entire assembly is just going to fold down just like that, and then this piece, what I like to do is I like to just bend these pieces a little bit, because these are his um, elbow joints right here, I like to just bend this a little bit, and then come to the bottom here, and you want to untab these sections from the feet right there, so if you can see right there, oh my goodness, the black plastic, return of the black plastic, it's the movie masterpiece all over again, okay, so you can see right, uh, son of, okay, you can see right there, that tab goes into that little slot right there, and you want to untab that from there. There you go. And then what you want to do is you want to take these pieces, and these will just kind of all pop out, just like that. So there you have that, and those angle those down, and those are going to be his arms. So there you have that. Now what you want to do is, what we want to do next? Okay, we're going to take the hood here. This little piece of the Mustang right here is going to untab from that little slot there. It just kind of sits in there, and you want to bring the entire roof of the car 
up and then this piece up like that and then this is on a double hinge little armature honestly the transformation is very similar to the movie masterpiece barricade not a complaint i'm just pointing it out it really is just kind of a a, a less engineered and complex um transformation of the movie masterpiece it's very 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 simple it's a space it okay yeah um i, I think i've wasted enough time there so it, it is very similar to the movie masterpiece one that's all i was trying to say that's all i was trying to say not doing a good job but that's all i was trying to say okay this piece right here so this piece of the car right here with the siren up here this piece extends up and then you rotate this piece around and sit it over the window right there it's kind of difficult to do but you just got to get that on there and then the hood piece you're going to fold this piece around and it will swivel around and it will sit over that as well so the entire roof of the car just kind of folds up like that and that's going to be his backpack and then this piece you want to bring up and it will clip right there very softly it just kind of just softly clicks in place right there and then the head comes up here and you want to bring this out but you don't just want to stop right there because it's his head is too recessed in there you want to bring it out on this little joint here and you want to get it far forward just like that so it actually is popping out of the place right so just like that okay now you want to bring now you want to come down to the legs here and we're going to take the entire roof of the car here and it's going to shift this up as far as we can go and just kind of stuff it in there although i think it's a little bit there we go there you go just like that so you want to get that as far up as you can go just like that so it's going to be sticking out a little bit but it's going to be worth it in the end so there you have that now i'll bring the feet down which will bring those pieces to the back and then fold these out and then split the legs right there and there you have the legs all done and you're done no i'm just kidding uh the arms the arms are really really cool just the, they transform very like i said very, very, oh, it's, it's basically just a simpler version of the movie Masterpiece transformation. So they're going to shift up on the double joint, just like the movie Masterpiece one. Shift those up, fold them up just like that. And then this piece is going to fold to the back, just like that. And then this piece is going to flip the hands out, just like that. And then fold this piece up. And then you want to open the hands like this. So the hands are kind of weird because this is how the hands have to be when you transform them. And I'll talk about that more when we do reverse transformation. But what you want to do is you just want to open that up just like that and there you have one arm all done do the same thing on the other side bring it up fold it in bring that in and flip out the hand from this portion here flip this piece up and it will tab in place right there and then push the finger out and open his hand just like that make sure that piece is tabbed in place right there and ladies and gentlemen there you have barricade it is absolutely amazing looking robot mode oh wait one more thing one more thing you want to take these uh chess pieces right here i totally forgot the light in the words of black arachnia from beast wars let there be light all right uh bring these pieces down and you want to angle them that way and that will give him his accurate chest right there and now we are done there you have barricade in his absolutely amazing looking robot mode and yeah he looks fantastic obviously he doesn't look nearly as good as the movie masterpiece one because the movie masterpiece one has got you know it's it's a much more expensive and high-end figure it's gonna look better it doesn't have any of the blue accents that the movie masterpiece one had and overall he definitely doesn't look quite as good as the movie masterpiece one in general but i mean for the scale i think he looks absolutely terrific i love the way he looks like i said this might be my new favorite studio series figure of all time and i definitely think he looks uh he looks like barricade one thing i will say though i think his chest might just be ever so slightly too thin um if i bring in the box here if you look at that picture on the box it l his chest looks a little broader than that and i think the movie masterpiece one overall does that a little bit better which we'll talk about more when we compare this guy to the movie masterpiece one in just a minute here but uh yeah overall i think they absolutely killed it with the robot mode here and the transformation to robot mode is super fun like i said before transformation back to car mode different story but uh overall i really like it he does have a he does have a backpack but honestly it's not too bad i kind of like the way uh i kind of like the way that it is it's just it doesn't really you can't really notice it from the front um when you first get him out of the packaging his backpack is actually going to be brought down to down here and it's going to look really ugly from the front but you can very easily just take it shift it up and just bring that piece up and fold it in there and then you can't see it from the front at all and that is how i prefer 
to have it. But yeah, overall, I think he looks terrific, honestly. I really like it. And I will say this, um, um, this guy, you might be watching the review right now and thinking to yourself, this guy doesn't look all that good. But when you get this guy in hand, you will definitely see what I'm talking about. Because I certainly did. When I was watching reviews of this guy, I was just like, eh, he doesn't look that great. I mean, for $20, at least he'll scale with my other, um, Decepticons and I can have him in scale with the other ones. Um, but when you get this guy in person, when you actually hold him with your hands, he is terrific. He feels great in your hand. He's super fun to pose. He's extremely posable. We'll talk about articulation in just a second here, but overall, he is so much better when you actually have him in your act in your uh, in your hands. But there you have the robot mode. All right, now for accessories, once again, of course, the death wheel. So how you incorporate the death wheel, you can't store it on anywhere. I mean, granted, you can kind of just like wedge it in there and hey, Hey, <laughs> hey, you can do it if you want to do it, but uh, in order to give it to him, what you want to do is you want to take the hands and you want to push them together and they will kind of clip in place because the thumb has, I'll talk about that more when we get to the reverse transformation, but uh, you want to take the peg there and insert that into the peg hole in his hand and there you have the... Death wheel right there. And honestly, I mean, it doesn't look that great, obviously. And that might just be because I have, um, I'm going to compare it. I'm comparing it to the movie Masterpiece one in my head. And I mean, yeah, there's, uh, <laughs> there ain't much competition in that regard. Like this thing looks way better on the movie Masterpiece one. But overall, for the price that the, uh, that the deluxe class here goes for, he is, well, went for. Um, we'll talk about that more at the end of the video, but uh, I, I really do think they did a good job with this. I like that they made it actually spin. I still would have preferred Frenzy because Frenzy was immensely awesome in the first movie, and I'm really worried about how we're going to get a Frenzy in the studio series because they've never really done a single Legends class figure before. They have done Legends class figures. The, uh, the RC figures were Legends class, but they haven't really just done one figure, and they've already done all the movie one Decepticons, so I don't know how they're gonna give us Frenzy, but I really, really need a Frenzy. I might have to go back and get that, uh, that one that came with the original 2007 Deluxe Barricade, but, uh, if that's what I have to do, and that's what I have to do, I'd rather not have to do that, because I'm sure it'll probably be pretty expensive, but I need a Frenzy, because he was so cool, but I really do like this accessory, and it does allow you to get some pretty cool poses, which I will show off in the showcase. But with that being said, for articulation, he has a ball joint right here at the head. He can do a full 360. This piece you can shift up and down to do to transformation, but not really a good reason to. Arms can do a full 360 at the ball joint right here. Uh, el elbows can go up that far. Pretty good range of movement there at the elbows. I like it. Uh, hands can open and close just a little bit. One thing I will say that I got to talk about with the uh, with these is how much cooler the hands on the movie masterpiece one look. Like he actually has like the tire and the hands like plugged into the tire which just looks so unbelievably awesome but these ones yeah he doesn't have that obviously you know it's a it's a very it's a much cheaper figure much cheaper overall so i'm not like mad at it or anything but i can't i can't deny how much cooler the movie masterpiece one looks overall uh the legs can go forward that far back that far he has kind of the chicken leg type dealio that michael bay loved so much for the decepticons but uh you can definitely get some good range of movement right there in the knees and the feet can go up and down and unfortunately no ankle pivot to speak of, which does kind of, uh, which is kind of tragic, but overall articulation is pretty solid in my opinion. But with that being said, for comparison, here he is with Bumblebee, and once again, they look very good together. I will leave a link in the description down below to the, uh, Studio Series Review playlist if you want to watch the review of Bumblebee, but yeah, they look very, very good together. I very much like the way that they look together right there. And here he is with Soundwave, who was originally going to be his the Decepticon in place of him in the original movie, but they look quite good together. Thank you, by the way, Soundwave, for giving us a barricade, because barricade is awesome. And we're going to save the best comparison for last, but here he is with the movie masterpiece barricade. And now for which barricade to get. Honestly, both of these figures are amazing. I love them both. I am super happy that I own both of them. I will not be getting rid of either in favor of the other. I love them both. I'm so... These are such great figures, but if you can only get one barricade, I'm just going to say it. I would recommend the Studio Series. Um, It's just a far more 
fun figure overall, transforming to and from. I mean, the, the transformation back into car mode is a little bit finicky, which we will talk about when we get to the reverse transformation in just a minute here. But overall, I do prefer the Studio Series one just because it fits me more as what I, and what I want in a figure. But the Movie Masterpiece one is amazing. I absolutely love it. It's a fantastic figure. If you like to look at the Movie Masterpiece one, by all means, go with the Movie Masterpiece one. Obviously, the Studio Series one is going to compare more with like your with like your your Studio Series figures. The Movie Masterpiece is, is made to scale with the Movie Masterpiece figures. So like obviously, if you get the Studio Series Bumblebee and then the Movie Masterpiece um, Barricade, yeah, it, there's there's definitely a size discrepancy there, but. It, overall, you can't go wrong with either of them. So, while I would personally say go for Studio Series, the Movie Masterpiece one is fantastic, and you definitely can't go wrong if you go with the Movie Masterpiece. And one final comparison before we get to the big one. Here he is with Optimus Prime, because I had him in robot mode for the, uh, the Bumblebee um, review, so, yeah, I, I recorded the Bumblebee, and I, re I recorded this review and the Bumblebee review, like, back-to-back, -back. so, yeah, there he is with Optimus Prime, just because I had him, so there he is with that. But now for the one that you all care about. <laughs> Amazon, I need my blackout. Oh my god. Oh my god, they look so good together. <laughs> this is actually my first time seeing them all together in robot mode because uh, I got this guy yesterday and I was messing with him. At, uh, I was messing with him uh, during uh, during my break at work and I got home and I just transformed him into car mode so I could do the review the the, the day after, uh, like today. And I had and I had all these guys in vehicle mode ready to go for the Bumblebee review as well. So this is my first time seeing them all together in robot mode. And oh my god, I need my blackout, please, Amazon, please, dude. When blackout is over here on this side, this is gonna be the most amazing set ever, dude. Like these figures are already insanely good. Like this Starscream, ten out of ten. This Megatron, nine out of ten. Bone Crusher. 9 out of 10, Brawl, 10 out of 10, Barricade, I'll spoil it, he's a 9 out of 10. These guys are amazing, man. I freak, I swear to God, Hasbro put all the time and effort into these movie one Decepticons because they are insanely good. I can't, I cannot believe how freaking amazing these guys are. Oh, I need my blackout so bad. I need my blackout so bad, man. We'll definitely do a whole bunch of, uh, of awesome action poses with these guys in the showcase, but oh my god, please, I need my blackout Amazon. But for your final comparison, here he is with a Marvel Legends, so you can get a basic sense of value scales with a standard 6 inch scale figure, and here he is with a NECA Ultimate figure, so you can get a basic sense of how he scales with a 7 inch scale figure right there. So he's tiny, yeah. He is small, and for $20, you're gonna think you're probably getting a little bit ripped off here, but honestly, he is so worth $20, it's not even funny. I'm just saying. More than $20? Eh, I don't, I don't know about that, but with that being said, let's get to the reverse transformation. Can't say I am looking forward to this. Oh, this is a finicky reverse transformation. It certainly is. It's not really, it's just the final part. That's not very fun to do, but let's get into it. So the hands, you just want to push the hands together and they will clip together just like that. And you want to make sure they're fully clipped together for this or else they will not, or else he will not transform properly. Bring these pieces up and fold this piece down and then tuck the hand up right there. And it will just slot right there. You can kind of feel it kind of click in place right there. Same thing on the other side here. Bring that in, fold that up. I'm going to bring some light in here. There we go, so you have a better time seeing me right there. And then you want to fold these pieces out on the double hinge, and it will peg right there. You can see how this slot, right, that slot, that little slot right there, will go into that piece right there. And there you have that. Make sure it's straight on this side. Bring this piece up, a little window piece. Once again, on the other side, bring that little piece up, and then fold that in. And there you have the arms all done. We can go ahead and take these pieces, shift them up, and then fold them in just like that, and then you can kind of, all right, so next thing we want to do is, what are we going to do next? Okay, uh, take this piece and unpeg it from, take the waist piece right here and unpeg it and fold it out like this, and then take the backpack here, fold it out, and then you want to fold the uh, the roof of the, the, the hood of the car up and just kind of fold it out just like that, and then take the top of the car here, bring it around just like that, and push it into the spot right there, okay, now take the head and push it into the little cavity right there, and then bring this piece up. I know what you're saying right now, this doesn't look that bad. The final part, like I said, is the part that really is, is the part that's not fun to do. It's just the final part. Everything else is fine. Um, but bring the hood up, and then you want to just tet that, 
little piece right there, you can see that is just going to slot right into there, just like that, which is nice. You want to make sure it's leveled properly, though, so it does it correctly. Mm, which I don't think mine is properly. There we go. It'll, it'll find its way. It'll find its way in there. All right. Now we begin the bullshit. So... Okay, so the legs, you want to tab the legs together in the bottom here, and then it, here's what you have to do. You have to put these legs in such a specific orientation. It's, it's extremely, it's extremely specific what you have to do. So you want to bring this piece up, and you want to make sure that entire piece is pushed up as far as it can go, and then you want to make sure the crotch assembly here is pushed down as far as it can go, just like that. Then you want to bring the feet, we're going to bring, we're going to go ahead and bring the feet back, and that we can peg these pieces together in the back there and just have that swung out and then just kind of fold this in right there. It's going to be kind of finicky. And you want to get, so once again, you want to have that piece up into that section right there. You want to have this piece leveled right there. And then you want to have these pieces up here because you want those two slots on the legs there. You want those slots, which I'll tell you right now, are the bane of my fucking existence. Those slots you're going to have straight. You want to have those straight with the car just like that. And now for the fun part. Fun as in sarcastic, if you couldn't tell. Um, you want to bring these pieces up, and these are going to slot into, and these are going to peg into, a num into numerous ports right here. So that slot is going to tab, hopefully, into that slot in the leg that we were made that we made sure was lined up properly, and that little tab is going to tab into that little section, that little notch right there in the foot. So here we go. Bring this in. I like to kind of fold this back a little bit. It just makes it a little bit easier, the little elbow section right there. Fold this in. Make sure all of that is like that. Get it in there. Make sure everything is tabbed in, and then make sure this piece slots into that tab. Like I said, this thing is the bane of my existence. This fucking tab, this slot tab assembly is such bullshit. <laughs> oh, I hate this part, man. This is the only thing about this figure that I absolutely hate is this little section right here. Just getting that tabbed in there. There we go. There we go. Got it. Okay. And then make sure that piece is slotted in there into the foot. And there you have one side pretty much done. Make sure all that's there. And then make sure that piece comes up and tabs in right there. Okay. There's one side done. The other side is 10 times harder because you don't have any freaking clearance to do anything because the other side's already done. All right, here we go. Make sure this is leveled. That slot is leveled. Okay. Bring this piece out, fold it in. And then once again, I like to angle these bags just to make it a little bit easier to get in there. Bring these in. You can kind of tab these together in the back here if you want. Just slot them together right there. Easier said than done, of course. And there you go. Just kind of the motto for this entire figure is easier said than done. Get that slotted in there. All right, now we just got to get this tabbed in there. Come on, please. Just go in. Just go in. I'll be the happiest. I'll be the happiest. Oh, come on, man. I tell you, man, it's the bane of my fucking existence. <laughs> All right, and once you got all that bullshit in tabbed, oh fucking Christ, <laughs> it's almost over. All right, you want to take the spoiler here, you want to bring this up, and then you want to just push these two pieces together just so you can get this kind of started here, get those into those little slots here, and then you're going to see they're not tabbed in, but what you want to do, what I like to do, is I take my thumb, oh my goodness gracious, okay, come on, <laughs> don't do it, we're almost done here, okay. I take my thumbs, put them on the headlights here, and then I just push these pieces in so that they go in. And with that, there you have Barricade back into his car mode. Okay, so I think, I'm guessing you all probably think it's not that bad. I was making a big deal out of nothing. Trust me. Doing it is not fun. Getting those, specifically getting those tabs into the slot in the legs there, it's not fun. And the, the orientation that those legs have to be in, I'll tell you right now. Obviously, I never use the instructions when I figure out my transformations. I never do. I prefer figuring it out on my own. It, it's fun for me. But good lord, oh my god, I was struggling getting those pieces tabbed in, those slots on the side there. I was struggling getting those tabbed in for like... 40 minutes straight. I could not figure it out and I had to take a look at the instructions. I watched some videos online. Finally got it. Thank you, Emgo, for your JTI video. It helped me immensely for this. Oh my god, man. It's not, it's not fun, but it's done. I am done. Let's do our showcase.
Ah, Barricade, I see the effects of that cake finally wore off. Yes, Lord Megatron, and I won't lie, it does feel good to be back. Good, that's what I like to hear. You'll always be our little infantry scout. Oh, I didn't realize I came here to be disrespected. Ah, uh, Lord Megatron, we may have a problem. What is it, Brawl? It's Blackout Lord. He says he's in some place called, um, Nigeria. Nigeria? What the fuck is that supposed to mean? I have absolutely no idea. Well, how long is he going to be there for? He says he's not 100% sure, but he should be there in about a week. A week? God damn it, Blackout. Or should I say, Amazon. And there you have, I forgot to turn on the base. All right, there you have Barricade. Get ready for a gush fest of this figure. I freaking love this thing. This might be my favorite Studio Series figure so far. I just love how small he is. He's so fun to play with. The transformation from car mode to robot mode is really fun. The transformation from robot mode to car mode is very, is frustrating only at the very end. Just that last little part of getting everything tabbed into the legs and uh, the arms and the legs is just a little bit frustrating, but overall, I think this figure's a knockout win. I love him. Honestly, that little, that last little section of the, of the reverse transformation is my only complaint with the figure. I just think he is fantastic. I love him so much. He looks absolutely incredible next to the other movie one Decepticons, and I, God, cannot wait to get Blackout. Dude, I am literally losing sleep over fucking Blackout right now. I need my Blackout. Amazon, please, please have mercy, but... Uh, overall, I think this figure is absolutely awesome. I say definitely pick him up. Don't pay too much for him because I got I got mine for retail price, so I got really lucky with mine. It did take a while though. It did took it did take quite a while, but I did get mine for standard price. Um, but I would say don't pay a lot more than standard price for this guy. Don't go crazy with him. Um, and you know if it gets if it gets to a certain point, I mean the movie masterpiece one might be a better way to go, but he's not gonna look nearly as good with your other Studio Series Decepticons. But overall, I think this figure is an absolute absolute knockout win i freaking love the way i just i love i love this figure I absolutely do he might be my absolute favorite in the studio series so far and it might be biased because i freaking love barricade he's like one of my favorite decepticons of the entire movie verse if not my absolute favorite honestly he might be i freaking love barricade he's just awesome he's so iconic uh with his fucking are you username ladies man 217 it's it's like the one thing that everybody remembers from this movie uh not me though i remember the whole movie because i think the movie's a masterpiece but Overall, this figure is amazing. I love it. It's a character I love. It's a well, it's a super well done figure, and I just, I really love this thing. And he's got a nine out of ten from me. I just really, really, really like this figure. Also, if you're wondering why I gave Barricade this voice, which sounds really weird, um, it's because in the uh, the old Decepticon DS game for the, the 2007, well, it might not have been 2007, it was based off the first movie, but the old Decepticon DS game, that's what he sounded like in the game, and that's how I remember and he talked a lot in that game, and I played a kid, I need to re-get that game, because I don't have it anymore, and I really want to replay it, but um, he sounded like that in the game, he sounded like that, look up clips of the uh, Decepticon DS game he he sound he sounds like this he talks like this he talks like a like an actual like police officer guy uh so that's why i gave him that voice so uh yeah once again this figure is absolutely awesome i recommend him extremely he's he's absolutely awesome and with that being said i think i am finally done oh man two reviews to wrote uh back to back takes a lot out of you a lot of transforming but uh they had everybody. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more Transformer reviews and other figure reviews. And this is DK Guillotine, uh, signing out.